Hello cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, no matter what the world throws at us. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. It is Tuesday the 11th of July 2023 and this is a YouTube premiere. We're still away, we're still enjoying our travels and all the adventures that we're having. Hence the premiere. <laughs> I should be back very, very soon. I have to say, look, I call this show the insanity of it all. Because really, our life is a little bit insane. Many, many times on this journey to living the cheapskates way, I questioned the sanity of the things I was doing. Were the madcap ideas I kept coming up with really helping us to live on the income we had? You know, was making apple drink for the kids by boiling the apple peels and cores really saving us money? Was leftover soup really tasty or was I just deluding myself to save some money? You know, did the homemade washing powder really really get the clothes clean yes it does yes it does it really does it's been proven was it really saving money to make my own washing powder yes yes it was it is i still do it were all these weird and wonderful actions improving our lifestyle or were they keeping me so busy that I hadn't realised we were really going backwards. So I didn't give up and just go into denial about just how dire our situation was when disaster struck, and you can read about that on our website. I would calculate the cost of my crazy ideas versus the cost of the socially acceptable solutions because a lot of what I was doing way back then was odd, was weird, was crazy. I'd work out the cost and the answer would either make me smile or I'd cry. Now, thankfully, far more smiles and frowns and living the cheapskates way became not only a, um, a habit but it became fun too you know in the early days the groceries gave me the biggest smile i went from spending a hundred dollars a week pre-disaster to a hundred dollars a fortnight early in the disaster recovery stage to under 180 dollars a month I loved the challenge of getting all the stuff we liked for less and less. And I never once complained about the weight of the leftover money in my purse. And I had money in my purse. It was cash. I loved having all that change. It meant that the savings were really happening. They weren't just a delightful dream. I wasn't deluding myself. When I went grocery shopping, the markdown trolley became the first port of call. I can remember buying 17 boxes of Mackenzie's ground rice for just 10 cents each. My kids, they still do, my kids loved ground rice porridge. They still love it. It's really nice for breakfast. It's a great dessert if you add a blob of jam to it. But for 10 cents a box, that lasted us for three years, $1.70 for three years breakfast. Another time I bought 31 packets of cheese and leek soup, oh, wish Continental would bring that back, for 22 cents each because I used it in my potato bake. It was really nice flavour in white sauce for lasagnas instead of using cottage cheese for 22 cents. They weren't crazy ideas. They were smart ideas to do those, to buy those things. You know, in my quest to cut the grocery bill 
it meant that we ate more made from scratch meals. We tried lots of new and to us exotic ingredients. I'm the first to say I am not a very good cook at the best of times. So cooking truly from scratch was a challenge for me and it was a bit of a risk for the family. Um, the kids still talk about the salmon dish. You know, and I always knew a recipe was a dud because um, Wayne would say, I don't think we'll have that again. Now, he's pretty good. He never complains, never once complained about a meal I've dished up to him. If he doesn't comment, then I know the meal's a winner. It gets added into the meal plan. It goes into the rotation. If he didn't like it, that's what he'd say. Don't think we'll have that again. So we don't. Over time, as the grocery spending was brought under control, I started to look at other ways to cut our cost of living. So for me, with three little kids, clothing was the next easiest thing to not spend a lot on, although it would be easy, very easy, to spend a lot on clothes for children. And there were so many options. I could buy only basics in one colour. I could buy only basics from a department store. I could buy only basics from um, a department store on sale. Or I could ask for clothes for the kids for their birthdays and Christmas. I did. Wayne's mum and my mum, the granny and grandma, took turns giving them clothes. One will give them clothes for birthday, one will give them clothes for Christmas and the other will give them the toy. I could buy only from the markets and I often did. I could buy some items from op shops. I still do. I could buy everything from op shops. Wish I could. I could learn to sew and make all our clothes. I did. Or find a combination of all of the above that worked within our budget and that's what I did. I took the things that worked for us. Now I chose option nine, which was really neat because it meant I had to learn to, um, to sew. I'd learnt basic sewing at school um, and I'd been dragged along, I've talked about this before, I've been dragged along to a knit week course and I've done a video on this, talked about this and because it's official, I'm a fully certified knit week. But my mother, my mother could sew. She was a beautiful seamstress. So I sort of just relied on her talent for years. But when disaster struck, she is 500 kilometres away. Now, by some perverse act of fate, Wayne had bought me a beautiful brand new sewing machine as a wedding present. So there was no real reason why I couldn't make our clothes, couldn't do things for our home. I've always liked a bargain, so op shopping wasn't a hardship. In fact, it was fun and it still is. I discovered factory outlets I never knew existed and I became quite adept at selecting items that were marked seconds, turning them into um, something unique, something fashionable but that nobody else would have for all of us. I found a solution to our clothing problem that suited my family and my budget. Now, I also found markets the perfect place to buy kids' clothes. I remember, oh, the boys were still in primary school and I was at my favourite market stall and they had Old Navy wind cheaters for $4 each. $4 each. I bought one in each size from a 4 through to a 16. People thought I was completely nuts. But those jumpers, they were the boys' best winter jumpers for eight years, nine years. 
they were genuine old navy they were just beautiful the quality was there they were able to be passed down once i got the grocery budget and our clothing budget under control i sort of was patting myself on the back doing good there i thought we were doing really well and then i remember the electricity bill came in and it was a winter bill it was 230 dollars and I almost cried because remember, we had no income at this time. So that turned me to looking for ways to cut the power bill and the gas bill and the water bill and the phone bill too, because every call we made back then was STD. Subscriber trunk dialing. There was no, you know, flat rate or anything. And... My mum was 500 kilometres this way. Wayne's family was 500 kilometres this way. Every call was expensive. So I looked at all our utilities. I went through them in great detail. And we did have a couple of rocky weeks where I found the right balance for us. I did go so far as to actually turn the hot water off to save on gas. And then after a you know it was winter and it was cold and the water heater was outside and it cooled down really fast so after you know a couple of cold lukewarmish cold showers we decided that for us having hot water at any time was important but you know what if you only shower at night you might be able to run the dishwasher at the same time and turn the hot water off during the day we do have it turned down but um we still like our hot water These days, we do turn the hot water off when we go away for longer than a weekend. So if we're away for four days, five days or a week or six weeks, the hot water gets turned off. Um, there's no point in heating water if it's not being used. There's just not. It's ridiculous. Instead of turning on the ceiling lights in the lounge room that all have Three, three globes each, we use table lamps. We have, I have one, Wayne has one, table lamp, light of the TV if we've got TV, plenty of light. We turn lights off when we leave the room, we make sure all the appliances We wear jumpers and socks and slippers instead of turning the thermostat up on the heater if we've got the heater on, but we prefer to use the fire if we can, because firewood, we collect it for nothing. I have a thermometer for the kitchen. And you know, if it's really, really cold, I might put the heater on. If it's really, really cold to boost what the fire is but not usually and when we do thermostat for winter is 18 degrees for summer it's 25 for cooling um, and we sort of have a rule that the ducted heating the pilot light for the ducted heating doesn't get lit till mother's day although we did light it early this winter it was a bit cold we turn it off on the first of october um, i have knee rugs on all the chairs and warmies for us to snuggle up in while we're reading or watching TV. They're just a few of the probably stranger, quirkier things that we do for heat, but they save a lot of money because we use a lot less power. It took us a little while and probably more than a few moments of insanity to become habitual cheapskates. It wasn't, it wasn't an instant process. Disaster didn't strike one day and the next day we were just brilliant at living the cheapskates way. We've had to refine it over the years. And that's what you need to do too. If you're just starting out in this, you'll refine it. Some things will work for you, some things won't. But over the years, it's become automatic to look at something and ask, you know, is there a cheaper way to do whatever usually there is 
there's not one single cheapskates way that's helped us to live debt free or build savings. Instead, it's the cumulative effect of all the little things we do that has allowed, um, it's allowed me to be a stay at home mum when my children were little, um, was allowed us to give the children the things we wanted them to have as they were growing up, you know, youth groups, sport, music lessons, art lessons. And it's allowed us to live the lifestyle we want to live. Not everyone is going to use the same hints, the same tips, the ideas, the strategies to meet their goals. And that's okay because the cheapskates way isn't for everyone. In fact, that is the cheapskates way to find just what works for you in all this frugality insanity. Find your own way and live the cheapskates way your way. Thank you for sticking with me and watching all the way through. If you know someone who might like this video, please click that share button, send them the link. There are three simple things you can do. Like, subscribe, share to help our channel to grow and to be recognized more easily. And the easier it is to find us, the easier it is for us to spread the word that it is not only okay to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing, but it is absolutely possible to do it even in 2023. Right. I'll be back next week with another Cheapskates Club video to save you money, time and energy. But until then, have a great week and happy cheapskating, everyone. See you then.